we're going to talk about some unique, uh, pretty wild stuff today. <laughs> I love going down the rabbit hole a little bit. And when you are guided by John Keel, you're usually on the right track. Uh, John Keel, of course, is the guy that wrote uh, The Mothman Prophecies and many other books. But, I mean, that's probably what he's going to be really mostly known for because um, that was such a, an enormous, fascinating story. But before I go down that wonderful rabbit hole, uh, as I know Robin is watching, happy birthday, Ted. It's a week late. I meant to say it last week, and I can't believe I forgot it. I, I, I had a note, but I didn't write it down. If I don't write it down on the live stream, it just does not happen. So one of the great storytellers out there, um, uh, Ted Theodore Williams of the Galena Ghost Tour Company, uh, wonderful guy and with a wonderful wife, Robin. I always love seeing you come on in. And so it was Ted's request that we talk about some some Wisconsin cryptids. And this is kinda gonna be nice because it'll lead into what our main topic is. Uh, again, window areas. Now, just like when a couple of weeks ago, my Cuberty asked for a, a bunch of, um, a collection of Wisconsin haunted cemeteries, I'm relatively new here. And in the last three years since I've been here, I've either been a on the road all the time or this year locked up at home and can't really get out. So I have not explored much of the state that I live in. Uh, so much like last time, I'm going to rely on somebody else's list and uh, I'll go through it fairly quickly. And this is from volume one uh, dot org. Uh, I've never even heard of this website before, but uh, a lot of cryptid stuff came up when I was searching. So apparently this is a good source. Uh, so Beast of Bray Road, of course, is obviously takes the number one spot. Big shout out to Linda Godfrey. If you ever want to hear a good interview with, or several with Linda Godfrey, definitely check out the See You on the Other Side podcast. Um, description, bulky fellow, upright on two legs, a wolf-like face about the size of a bear. It has bright red eyes. It's known as Wisconsin Werewolf. The Beast of Bray Road was originally sighted in Elkhorn, but seems like its habitat has expanded across the whole state. Being the carnivore that it is, it's often seen eating some freshly killed prey near the roadside. Um, so this, Linda Godfrey was working as a journalist and, um, and a cartoonist as well, or an illustrator, maybe I should say. And she was following up on some news story. And uh, she saw, as she was interviewing somebody from uh, the police department, uh, a folder that said werewolf. Now, obviously, you're going to ask, even though that's not relating to your story, you're going to ask, what's in there? It's like, well, there's been all of these werewolf sightings. And so she then took it upon herself to interview all these witnesses and these sightings are ongoing to this day uh, so from the 70s through today um i think there are some stories that date back into the 1930s even some random ones but then it, it just got so much more intense in the 70s who knows maybe it was at a time when there's a lot more expansion a lot more houses being built and and the habitat getting smaller uh but this upright canid, canid uh, has been seen and is definitely wisconsin's most famous uh creature phantom chickens now this is one i have not heard about in Seymour, I gotta look this one up, I don't know where Seymour is. Uh, a legendary road called Chicken Alley. Unsuspecting drivers have reported hitting a chicken, walking out to investigate and seeing nothing to be found. Others have seen an entire flock, or technically a brood, of chickens storm down the road but disappear before any bird could be hurt. Yep, ghost chickens. So yeah, I think this wouldn't fit as a cryptid, but definitely a phantom, a ghost, ghost chickens. We've, we, I've heard of ghost cows, ghost horses, ghost other animals, so why not chickens? Uh, the fact that they are on Chicken Alley is even more apropos. Now, here's another uh, fun little Los Angeles side note. There are wild chickens uh, that live under the 101 Highway in Hollywood. Who knows how many generations back they go, but they live in this area that's kind of just guarded from uh, the highway, the freeway, the Hollywood freeway. Um, but they continue to live on to this day. Uh, we go next to Rosendale, uh, a witch of some sort, which again, not a cryptid. I would think, unless I am disproven as I read this. Story begins like many witch stories before it. Isolated woman in a dilapidated house. When the woman resided there 70 years ago, said it was ominous chanting that could be heard coming from the house, and naturally the rumor mill began churning out ideas of the old woman was involved with gasp, unholy rituals. So obviously the land is now cursed. Okay, that is a very vague uh, uh, write-up. Much more needs to be... If anybody has any more... Uh, uh, good Wisconsin cryptids that want, they want to list or color commentary on what I'm reading, uh, do mention it. And as soon as I get done with this little list, I'll get back to the comments. And now this one was uh, requested specifically from Ted, which I'd never heard of before. I don't think I'd heard of. Um, 
the pale vampire of Graceland Cemetery in Mineral Point. And the days of yesteryear, <laughs> in parentheses, the 1980s, a police officer was surprised to find one of Dracula's relatives lounging about in Graceland Cemetery. Doing his duty, he chased the, he chased the strange creature down, only to be cut off when it scaled the encompassing fence and vanished. Many believe that it was probably a practical joker or, or someone who was very confused. I don't know why confusion has to do anything with it. Uh, so first off, uh, first blush, it makes me think of also in the 1980s, uh, St. Casimir in the south uh, south suburbs of Chicago. Uh, that was known as the St. Casimir's Vampire, St. Casimir Cemetery. Um, and people don't know, uh, it was cited by multiple people, very much a Nosferatu, Nosferatu type creature. And now I'm trying to remember, oh, a book I read at the beginning of this year. I needed to go back and, and remember the title of it. But they, they talk about a whole bunch of different cases that are similar to this, uh, comparing it also to the spring Heel Jack character in Jolly Old England. Uh, fascinating. And obviously, if Ted has any more information about it or why it specifically was of interest to him, let me know. Um, Peppy, the environmental acti activist. So this is in Lake Pepin, P-E-P-I-N which I looked this one up on the map. It is north of La Crosse on the Mississippi River. Um, it's a very much, and the photo is actually pretty interesting looking. Um, the link to this article I'm looking at is on uh, the video description on the What's Your Ghost Story page. Legends of Pepe, Pe Pepe, I'm guessing, go back to Native American folklore with stories of a strange creature lurking just below the surface. As his fame grew, so did contributions to society. One myth claims Pepe is the inspiration for water skiing. Another lists her as the reason for a village's survival. On top of that, you can see on its website, Pepe has become a spokesperson for a clean water system. Don't be mean, keep my water clean. Uh, read about the efforts to track the monster down. Okay, so obviously this was a phenomenon. This one unfortunately doesn't have a year, but apparently it was something of a phenomenon. Maybe there was a, a festival uh, in this small village at some point in time. Uh, so this is interesting to me because, as I said, it's just north of La Crosse. I directed the movie The, um, the Hidden Truth, which, talk, which looks into this bizarre and strange series of deaths that happened in the La Crosse River, in the, in the La Crosse area in the Mississippi River. And eventually I'll do an entire episode just about this but it is a fascinating story because we are talking about real life recent deaths ongoing in this area and so we the I was the director I was not the investigator uh, but the crew that did the investigation looked into all sorts of Native American legends and all kinds of possible uh, interesting stories related to this area why would this one area be so strangely charged also the FBI investigated twice looking for a serial killer both times ruled it out so we know it's not it's either a very bizarre statistical anomaly that all these people are dying in this area and it's such a regular consistent way um that's that's what we're saying right now that's what the authorities are saying but if there is a paranormal element what might it be and native americans said that there was a um a sea creature uh in this area that went deeper into the water as the white man approached but uh but that he's still down there so it's kind of interesting that just up river not all that far from uh, La Crosse, there is another story of a river, river serpent. Uh, gotta love ghost chicken, says Robin. Uh, Robin has seen ghost cows? Okay. Need more. <laughs> want to, definitely want to hear that. We need to investigate the vampire together. Uh, we will talk to those in Mineral Point. Awesome. Uh, to finish off this list, uh, rock tossing gnomes. Um, so now you start to wonder, where do you draw the line between a cryptid, which is a mythical animal, versus um, some supernatural being like like a, a small human, maybe. Uh, a gnome. Uh, your standard gnome appearance, pointed ears, three to four feet tall, with the obligatory coned hat. As far as the strange and unusual goes, Holy Cross Road is where it's at. Just for starters, local legend has it that at night you can see the ghost of a young mother killed on the train tracks. But if that doesn't get your gears grinding, there's always the gnomes. Throw a rock into the woods, expect it to be thrown back by these sassy yet mysterious creatures. Okay, this is actually going to tie in nicely to one of my first stories as well, uh, as is the next one. The many big feet of Wisconsin, location countless. Uh, we all know what Bigfoot is. I don't need to read the physical description. Given, Wisconsin, given Wisconsin's majestic woodlands, you can really blame Bigfoot for wanting to hang around. Would you blame him? Uh, there are ample stories of Bigfoot sightings around the state. 
Uh, though the creature may differ in appearance here and there, it's always causing trouble. Why, in Plainfield, the, dar Plainfield, the darn thing is said to have uh, trapped three teens. In Clark County, it was out and about carrying a goat like it was no big deal. And don't get me started on the pickle patch incident in Shawano. Okay, so there's the, these sites are um, frustrating because they give you just enough information, but then you know it gives you something to go on to go uh, do more research of your own. Because yeah, this, those are uh, interesting stories, uh, piquing my interest. And anytime you mention Plainfield, you always have to mention that's where Ed Gein practiced his uh, arts and crafts. Let's let's not say that is a happy birthday to ted there are a couple of stories i'm going to tell you my bigfoot stories in the course of this so there are more um cryptids coming um quite a few actually oh I, it's so funny that the the hodag did not appear in here uh that was up in rhinelander wisconsin uh late 1800s this bizarre creature which you have to think of it i think of it like the fiji mermaid maybe where somebody was being very creative with their taxidermy skills and created this bizarre looking creature. Um, but it was this uh, very, again, late 1800s, 1890s, there was a, a very stout creature, broad, crazy looking demonic face, spiked tail. Uh, apparently the first one that was sighted was killed with dynamite, but they were able to uh, shoot and then put on display the second one, which of course made the state fair rounds, which, you know, and now up in Rhinelander, I think at least one of the schools, uh, their school mascot is the Hodags, Hodags, which is, I always love that. You know, as I've talked about many times on this episode, on this uh, series, by the way, episode 15 already. I can't believe I've been doing this for 15 straight up uh, weeks. Um, I always love when people, uh, when towns embrace their bizarre history and, uh, and celebrate it like that. Oh, <laughs> so before I get off topic, um, so Mystery Science Theater 3000 as you may know, came back a few years ago on Netflix. One of their first episodes, they did this hilarious song called Every Country Has a Monster They're Afraid Of, uh, where it was a Billy Joel, We Didn't Start the Fire look at just a rambling list of different countries and their their famous cryptids. And uh, so in the show notes on the What's Your Ghost Story side, I've got a link to that YouTube video, but also I did an article that did not get enough attention and I was excited about it. It was a lot of fun to research it, but I took the lyrics from that that song and then did research like, what are they talking about? Because most of them were things I'd never heard of. What's gone on in the news? Uh, very briefly, we're not gonna talk too much uh, about coronavirus, but also obviously it has been really increasing. It's the most infuriating thing about this uh, and almost like sneaky, clever thing about this virus is that you, you the cause and effect is so delayed from each other. Um, and that's what makes it so dangerous. If we were to lock down tomorrow, like hardcore lockdown, nobody leaves the house. Uh, we wouldn't see the death count start to go down for like a month um, because it takes a while for people to get symptomatic. And then it would take another couple of weeks for people to begin showing symptoms. And then another couple of weeks as people get worse. Uh, so so sadly it's just it's always going to be on us to do what we can to wear masks socially distance just be as smart as we possibly can to keep ourselves and everybody else uh healthy because right now the death count in america is at 143,000. could you imagine the beginning of this year thinking that 143,000 and counting people were going to die from this crazy virus we haven't seen in 100 years and uh and also the daily death count obviously is going way up it's up to almost 800 and that is the rolling seven day average uh, i know it's the actual count it was like over a thousand yesterday so just horrible time so please everybody just do what's best for everybody so that the world can well so that the country can try to open remain open as much as it is and hopefully get ourselves to a point that travel is allowed again and all that um because that virus the, that the vaccine is coming so just be patient. We will get there. The other much more fun thing to talk about in the news is the comet Neowice, which has been visible for a couple of weeks now. And actually, oh, it's going to be a good night for it. You'll see a couple of photos that I posted, uh, some of them taken from right here where I'm sitting. Uh, and it was really a fascinating experience to, to take these photos. We're in the, on the edge of a major city. So... You know, it's not the best conditions, but we're also, we're close to farm fields and whatnot. It's not like we're in the middle of a downtown area. Uh, so even with the, the naked eye, you can see it a little bit. You keep the shutter open on the camera longer, obviously it comes uh, much more vibrantly through. And what was really fascinating about that 
other things began to come up as well. See a plane go by and you see that really bright red dotted line and that's the plane going by and the, the dots flashing by it. Uh, but in a couple of the other images, you see these really faint streaks. What are they? I have no idea. Could they be satellites way up in space? Very probably. This is not the type of photo I've taken very much. So uh, I'm sure people that with more knowledge and experience know what this is. I would definitely love to know. The other fascinating thing I found, if you look at the photo that shows the water tower and the comet right by the water tower, when I took that photo, it was closer to midnight. It was, the comet was much closer to bright lights. It was not visible to the naked eye anymore. But with the drag shutter, it was plain as day on the resulting image. So that just makes you wonder, like, what else is up in the sky that if we just held the shutter open longer, we might be able to capture? It's really piqued my curiosity. So if anybody else has gotten any interesting photos, too, I'd very much implore you to take some photos and share them. Window areas. Now, this I read in a book by John Keel titled our haunted planet and that was not the first time he mentioned this apparently but first time i had ever been aware of it and it, it, it was something that i don't know why it resonated with me I, I found it to be interesting and the idea is that this is a place that is haunted today it was haunted yesterday it was haunted thousands of years ago and what we today would call haunted just because weird stuff is going on there um but really it's not just that this place always has some sort of a ghost story associated with it it's that it has all sorts of stories associated with it um and we are talking about ghost stories, of course. We're talking about UFO sightings, and we're talking about cryptid sightings all happening in this same area. And it would be interesting to find out. I don't think he'll ever really narrow it in, like, how small must the area be before we can call it a window area? Because Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, could be considered that if you can take a whole town as part of it. Because very haunted site. They've had some UFO sightings. Uh, and they used to have, at least, uh, a sea monster in their lake. I talked about in the past, so again, I won't go into it very in a lot of detail, but uh, Horseman Cemetery in Shelbyville County, I believe it was, Illinois, which is this completely remote location, so isolated, so far off the highway, where the cemetery at the top of a hill, people have reported seeing, um, well, the, the farm around it, the farms around it uh, had cattle mutilations, I believe that there were uh, maybe like the government helicopter, that kind of an idea. Uh, some things in the sky like that. Uh, there are multiple types of uh, uh, cryptids, uh, upright canines, just like we we're talking about with the Beast of Bray Road, uh, but also a flying dragon creature <laughs> that people had seen since uh, Native American times, which, again, I can't believe that doesn't get more press. It's such a remote place. Yes, but come on, a dragon in Illinois, that should get some more headlines. Um, and then, of course, also a ghost story involving an old man that will come running at you. If you're in the cemetery, come emerging from the woods that surround the cemetery as if you're about to get beat up by an old guy and he will disappear before he makes contact with you. So that's one. And this is a very small area, one place that has all that phenomena. And uh, that, one of the reasons that place is so fascinating to me, uh, for one, nobody's really covered it very much. Again, it's so isolated. But how can one small area have so much activity so john keel would probably uh, hypothesize that this for whatever reason is a window area where uh doorways of sorts maybe interdimensional travelers could come through for whatever reason uh maybe amplified energy sources here that would make that would attract these type of beings whatever the case uh, a lot more it, it's really even hard to find if you do a search for window areas even with John Keel's name, um, it's, it's hard to find much more information on it. So I, so I wanted to bring this, uh, this uh, term up to the forefront a little bit more. And maybe when it makes its rounds here on Facebook and then YouTube, more people will start to chime in and, and think about things in these ways. Because I, I do think it's very possible that what we call the paranormal, there's a lot more connectivity between UFOs, cryptids, and ghost sightings. Griffith Park is definitely one of these sites. Uh, this is a place, it's where the Hollywood sign is, um, just just north of Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, of course, you know, Hollywood land uh, uh, subdivision is built around this area too. It, its history goes back to it being cursed. A landowner that owned this area and his next of kin was his niece, who when he got really ill, you know, uh, it was believed that he was going to pass it down to his uh, who's to his niece. Um, however, whether it was, as some people think, maybe it was an executor of the estate getting involved, or if there was maybe sexism involved or something, he did not end up giving it on to her. 
there's ghost stories all over the place uh, and it is first linked back to Donna Petronella um, from 1863 um, after finding out that her uncle Don Antonio Feliz would not be giving her the area giving her the land um, no one will profit from the land the one shall die in an untimely death and the other in blood and violence and of course that proclamation comes out true and then just so much death and sadness uh, continued leading up to Griffith uh, J. Griffith yeah Griffith J. Griffith yes he had the last name Griffith his parents said you know what's a good name Griffith bad violence followed him around including him going a little nuts and attacking his wife um, but yes the high strangeness absolutely too much says Wendy UFOs have been seen in this area there are different cryptids seen in this area as well um, Griffith Park of course the, the biggest sighting is the the, the biggest uh, paranormal sighting is Peg Entwistle who committed suicide by jumping off the Hollywood sign I'll probably do an entire an entire episode about that story and uh, investigation conducted there uh, around her death which the anniversary of that is in September uh, but th that's a, a sighting that has been seen by tons of people including many many people at the same time uh, the there used to be a zoo in Griffith Park that uh, today just has the remnants of the cages it's kind of a really awesome hike uh, to go through what used to be a zoo nestled into the mountains uh, but there are still phantom roars heard from animals there and uh, some really gnarly stories some sad stories too about animal abuse and animals kept in cages too small malnourished all that kind of terrible stuff plus plus animals that were uh, just not the right kind of animal to be sharing a space with other animals there was a uh, was there a polar bear named Ivar that would just kill any other polar bear he brought into his cage? Um, so then there's also the Beast of Griffith Park. And I'm going to read this. This is from a friend of mine, David Markland, who runs Creepy LA. And he runs the uh, Midsummer Scream uh, convention about horror, all things Halloween, Halloween uh, attractions, which I've been able to speak at a few times. Really, really fun event down in Long Beach. Whether it's werewolf, a demon possessed by Don Feliz, or a drug-induced drug hallucination, there's a creature within Griffith Park that's rumor to, rumored to exist over the past decades. October 2005, three men allegedly retreated from a late-night excursion to the park after an encounter with a beast that had green skin and red hair. Lerpa, the internet poster who shared the tale, so you know it's verifiable, said that she was visited by men immediately after her experience perhaps to prove that they weren't making the story up. She said the men each uh, drew separately what they saw, and with minor variations, the sketches all matched. Uh, its legs were very long, as were its feet, and its, uh, it was taking huge strides as it made its way down the street, she wrote. Its back was bent, and its neck was very long and bent forward. No human could be uh, bent like this, the way this thing was. <laughs> It is after 9, so it is mosquito o'clock. Uh, more recently, an 11-year-old boy named Jack wrote on the Weird California site that a 2009 visit, he was chased by an unusually large coyote. Reaching the top of the hill, he saw another kid around his age and warned them about the coyote. I'm glad you warned me, the kid told Jack, and then handed him an old firecracker. Here, take this. It's good luck. The kid then ran through some brushes onto a small path. Fearing the coyote, Jack tried to follow him, but he never caught up and never saw the kid or the coyote again. It's kind of interesting turn on that one um was that a phantom child as well uh there are stories up there where um valentino's horses would get spooked uh after valentino passed away uh they would they would always ride his horses up through there but after he passed away uh the horses would freak out at this one spot where which was valentino's favorite spot to go like sit on the mountainside and look out over the city so lots of strangeness going on whether it's ufos hauntings or cryptids uh, Griffith Park is definitely a crazy spot, as is, um, I have to mention Skinwalker Ranch because that place has had an incredible amount of history with um, uh, transforming, shape-shifting entities. Partrick Road in Napa Valley. Now you think Napa, you think of wine and upscale and all these really awesome things, which it is all of that as well. Uh, but the most famous, unusual place in... Napa Valley is uh, Partrick Road, and that's I mis uh, wrote it the first time I ever wrote it down as Patrick Road, but is P A R T R I C K, and it's so funny because this is a type of cryptid that you and I talking together, 
I would describe it to you and usually you would laugh because it's so silly. It's so over the top. But people that are residents and people who grew up in Napa, it's a very serious thing to them. And I should have actually mentioned this when I was doing my episode on paranormal TV shows, uh, which is that one other TV show I was involved with was uh, Mysteries and Monsters in America. Uh, I don't know if that's still on. I think it was Destination America, probably. Uh, but they first reached out to us to cover the lacrosse drowning story that, that we looked into. And apparently their series had always been about cryptids, about monsters of sorts. And they came across us and thought, well, this is a good mystery in America. And it has a monster element with a, a sea creature being observed there. Not really, I don't believe so much tied in with the, uh, the deaths, but still an interesting footnote, side note. And they eventually realized that they couldn't quite tell the story within you know their format so they said do you have anything else and i said well you, you should look out look at my video on rebobs of napa valley what are rebobs well rebobs are these uh monkey uh, winged robotic monkey creatures that terrorize the woods of napa valley like okay and uh and so he watched the video and they ended up making uh, an episode of their show and the producer ended up getting back to me and said that, that was his favorite production that he did um so that is exactly what it is. It, it's um, these part uh, fully monkey, but but winged and part robotic. And as the story goes, you go way back Partridge Road. It, it winds so deep into the mountains uh, in the middle of Napa Valley. People say eventually you get to the end of this road and you come across this fortress like barrier, huge walls with turrets and all this very fortified people will see the black government helicopters coming in and out of this location and and people theorize that once upon a time uh some government scientist was working on making super soldiers back in this area and whether they got out on accident or some as some of the stories go the the scientist passed away and then the lab was just left uncontrolled. I can't believe that there would only be one person on, on duty. But anyway, uh, whatever the case, these creatures escaped into the woods where they continued to uh, populate, which I don't know how you would continue on the, the metallic, passing that down, uh, the, the robotic side of it. Uh, but whatever the case, uh, it was genetically engineered enough that these things were able to procreate and continue to do so to this day. Um, and also up in this area, is Partrick Cemetery, which is an old pioneer cemetery. And I was trying so hard today to find exact uh, detailed ghost story uh, tales about it, but I could only ever get people saying that it's haunted, but I don't really know by what. But here it is, we do have uh, cryptids of sorts, although this is one of the few times where we have an origin of where these cryptids come from. Uh, ghost story, and um, I don't know if there are UFO sightings in this area, if the lights in the sky are related to anything otherworldly or if they're just CIA black helicopters. But again, I think that's close enough because you definitely have the government conspiracy side of it. Now, this area I, I tried with Max, uh, Max Tim, very good friend, and hello to Patty who is watching. Um, uh, tried to go up in this area. Max, uh, good friend and fellow adventurer and a fan of the paranormal and my co-host on the Fantastic Story Society. Uh, unfortunately, I was in his car and he wasn't as ballsy as I would have been because the road, it winds up into the mountains, uh, up and up and up. And the road gets narrower and narrower. And uh, you definitely, you, you come across uh, no trespassing signs. Um, but I don't think that applied to the road. I mean, don't go off the road. But it, it freaked him out enough. We never made it to the end, which I really, really want to do. Now, kind of an interesting thing is if you look at as I was doing my research today, if you look at Google Maps, Partrick Road goes up a little ways and stops. But if you look at topographical maps prior to 1984, it shows a huge network of roads that go much deeper into the mountain and, uh, and, and calls out where Partrick Cemetery is and all of this, which you can't find on current maps today. So that's not an indication of anything other than to say that there definitely was more back up in these mountains than we can see today. Um, and again, yeah, that is... Partrick Road and Napa. Love it so much. Okay, Kettle Moraine. Maybe I'm going to have to push this uh, because I just don't trust the internet right now. Um, but I will say, in, in broad strokes, Kettle Moraine is this beautiful, huge uh, part of Wisconsin, this huge protected uh, forested area that really cuts through a huge chunk of the center of the state. It is a place where people have seen 
countless cryptids through the years. Uh, Jay Bachochin, my partner from the lacrosse uh, uh, documentary, The Hidden Truth, this is where he goes. It used to be every week, and he did it for years. I don't know if he still goes out that often, but I would not be surprised if he does. Uh, he had all sorts of unbelievable encounters. And if you remember from that previous episode, that previous story where I was talking about uh, cryptids and there was a report of uh, rock throwing gnomes, this is a place where, and you have it on, uh, Jay has it on video very clearly. Uh, where rock, he's in the middle of the woods and rocks are flying through the air and you hear him like clicking off of the uh, branches as he's flying through and tapping past uh, uh, leaves and then landing at his feet. Like he, There's no chance that there's somebody out there just hoping to prank somebody on the off chance that some guy might walk down this path. Um, but yeah, something out there was throwing rocks. Uh, I like, and I mentioned this a bit last week too, that I, I really like the kettle because I believe... You're, you're viewing the experiences, which you have them out there. You're going to have some bizarre experiences through your own lens. So me as a ghost hunter, I, I say like, hey, what paranormal entity is doing this? Jay's into Bigfoot. He thinks it's Big, Bigfoot uh, hurling rocks. Um, but again, some of the things we've seen, I could I could understand if somebody said, well, that's demonic because it's creepy. It sounded like a, a growl. We've seen uh, floating red eyes. And I shouldn't say floating. But we just saw red eyes peering out, glowing from the darkness. Um just unbelievable things happen in in the kettle but also happening in the kettle is uh as we talked about again last week going up to uh dundee wisconsin that is this small point small considering people are calling it a mountain it's not that much of a mountain um but people have seen all sorts of ufos in this area including seeing ufos lingering until Apparently, military fighter jets are scrambled, and all of this stuff is on video. Um, makes you think of Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the uh, the bizarre rock formation, and for whatever reason, it's attracting these entities. Uh, apparently, I'm cut off again. I have no idea. Um, but I'm going to finish up right now. So Kettle Moraine, definitely something that has all of the issues. I have no idea. Uh, all of the issues. All of the paranormal uh, signatures. No idea why it's such a window area, but um, but yeah, that's going to be it for now. Since I don't even know if I'm online. If I am online, thank you for watching, and definitely check out the What's Your Ghost Story on YouTube because that's where you can see these without all the terrible interruptions.